sing to him. Over the mountains and the sea, your river runs with love for me. Now I will open up my heart and let the healer set me free. I'm happy to be in the truth, and I will daily lift my hands, for I will always sing when your love came down. Church, God, you're 
are so good. Sing it to him this morning. God, you're so good. God, you're so good. You're so good to me. Amen. Does anybody else in the house know how good God is? If you do, give him a hand clap of praise today. He is so good and so wor so worthy. came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then but I could see it now there was Jesus in the waiting in the searching in the healing a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment of where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus. For 
with this man who needs amazing kind of grace. Mm -hmm. Forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. And there was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing. Every minute, every moment of where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know or couldn't see it, there was Jesus on the mountain in the valley. There was Jesus in the shadows of the alley. That was awesome. Thank you. I got it. Yes, sir. Stand up and say it right now. It's good. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. Earlier this morning, I felt like I should ask somebody if they wanted to say anything. And I just said, if they do, they will. That's awesome. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody? Don't miss your opportunity. In a minute, we're going to look at Luke 2, right after the shepherds left, where we go from there. And Jesus is carried to the temple. It's kind of interesting. Some of the people realized what was going on. Some of the people didn't. Some of the people spoke up and blessed God. That's what it's going to say. Simeon blessed God. In that moment, some people didn't. It's interesting in the same place. Some people get it. Some people don't. Some people do. Some people don't. In every kind of way. So, it's good. Children? You going to do children's church? I almost forgot that. You got some over there, okay? Is there anybody here that wants to go to children's church? Miss Lisa, we'll get you set up there. They're, they're getting started already. About to get started. Here we go. Awesome. We'll get you fixed up there. Come right ahead. comes Jordan, I think. Yeah, come on, Jordan. Awesome. 
Amen. Miss Tanya Seegers is going to come and share with us a word, a word about where her mom is and her, and her father. And we're going to pray for some people who were sick. Primarily, we'll pray for her mom in this moment. So, Tanya, if you would come on and just stand here and share with us what's on your heart. Where you're at this morning. I asked her earlier if she would do this. And uh, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You, you can do it up here. We'll see you better. You. As a lot of y'all know, if you've been following on Facebook or any social media, my mom's at Huntsville Hospital on the ventilator in the ICU with COVID. Um, and I know there's so many families that have been touched by this. Kirk and I had it a few weeks ago, and it's rough. It's rough on a healthy young person, younger person. It's, it's devastating to someone older. Mom has a ton of underlying health problems, and um, my dad asked last night that we pray for some specific things. First of all, her lungs, that they'll clear so she can get off the ventilator. Secondly, that her kidneys will start working. She had cancer about six years ago, and chemo threw her into kidney failure. So she's had some kidney problems since, and her creatinine levels are rising. And also she's septic. She's got some septus in her blood. So none of these are good. <laughs> none of these are good. But I serve a mighty God, and I serve a God who heals. And he will either bring her through it or take her from it. And um, either way, I found peace with that. And the fact that my mother raised me in a godly home to know that no matter what, no matter how bad things get, and that song today just really rang home. Because throughout my life, all the things that have happened, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the times I've been abandoned, everything that you feel like you were the most alone, I never was. And I can look back now in my life and see God carrying me, seeing Jesus carrying me through all of it, through every minute of it, he's been there. And so right now, this is a trial, and a lot of y'all may be right where I am. I don't know. But if you would, please pray for my mom, Sandra Holmes, but also pray for my dad. Um, they've been together for over 60 years, and he is lost without her, not being able to see her. He's paranoid about giving COVID or getting COVID, so he won't let us come be with him. It's been very, very, very challenging for him, too, as anybody who's a caregiver can imagine. But I just want to thank y'all so much for giving for the outpouring of prayers and support that y'all have done. And so many people off across social media. Social media is a bad thing on so many levels. But the fact that I can put out a call to my praying friends, to those prayer warriors, and I know in a second I've got hundreds of people praying for my mama. It's just, it's, a, it's, a, it's taking something that maybe Satan meant for evil and using it for God's good and his glory. But um, thank you so much. And if y'all will, just please keep praying for my parents, Joe and Sandra Holmes. Thank you. Thank you. If you'll bow, we'll just pray now. <laughs> Father in heaven, we come before you in this moment. And God, first and foremost, we thank you that even in the song we just heard a few moments ago, that Jesus is always there. And God, in this moment, we need you. Uh, especially in the time we live, the day we live, and, and what many of us face. God, in this moment right now, we need you. And, and we pray, God, give us faith, give us trust. Fill us with your spirit that today, God, we can lean in and we can feel you. We can sense your presence with us and that we can glorify you. We can magnify, we can lift up the name of Jesus even in the midst of what is a very difficult time in our lives. When our circumstances have seemed to overrun us, God, we know you are there. And Lord, right now I pray for Miss Sandra Holmes and all of us together to come together with one heart and one mind. And we pray, God, for her lungs to be able to be better. Lord, to be stronger, for her kidneys to function, for the septus to be gone, and for her to find new strength. And Lord, I pray for her soul. I pray that right now she can know your presence with her. She can feel and sense and know the peace that the Apostle Paul spoke of when he said a peace that passes understanding. I pray for that peace for her, and I just pray that that presence can be right with her in this moment. And God, we ask you, bring healing to her body. Lord, we pray for, for Joe, uh, for the dear man of God that he is, still pastoring the church and 
doing what you have called for him to do. Strengthen him today. Bless him. God, just give him your strength again one more time. And Lord, I pray that you just bless that family. Lord, there's so many that I know that are sick. I do pray for Derek and Mallory at home sick today. I just pray, God, touch their bodies and bring healing into them and, and their family. And Lord, for those who've lost loved ones here on Christmas Eve, I just pray, God, touch those hearts and, and bring, Lord, your presence into that place. That place, it can feel so empty, so alone, so hard. And Lord, right now, may we just look toward you. Lord, may we all find new strength. God, as we come to the close of this year, this last Sunday of 2020, God, what a year this has been for many, many people, for many of us, for us as a church, for us as a church family. And God, Lord, may we wait upon you. May you renew our strength. May we mount up on wings like eagles. May we run and not grow weary. And Lord, we thank you. We thank you for Jesus. Above all things, we thank you in this moment that he loved us. That he left heaven and came to earth for one reason, for his love for us. So, Lord, that we could have what Jeff spoke of, hope. Hope. Hope not just for today, but hope for eternity. Thank you. Lord, bless this time. We thank you for it. May we honor you with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Luke chapter 2. Verse 21, we're going to read right there. I'm going to read a little uh, down to about 30, verse 35. You know the story. You know the story of uh, Simeon, and we're going to talk about him just a little bit. We're going to see him. We're going to know a little bit about him. Uh, the thought, I guess, that I had earlier today, uh, I've been reading this for a couple of days. Just read it, meditate on it, think about it a little bit. Uh, and I tried to put down some thoughts where we could understand that. And, and here's what I ended with right before we came to church. Is just say this. Christmas 365. Christmas 365. Well, some people say Christmas has been a little hard. Christmas has been a little challenge. And it has been this year for many. But, but for some, you know, I, I want to share a story with you. And, and it's got a little humor in it to me. And I hope it lifts your spirit up a little bit. And we'll think about it as we think about this. So, uh, my grandson Dawson just... A little bit over three years old. And so my daughter had gotten them Elf on the Shelves. Okay, so they each had one. So Thursday night, when it was time to sit out the milk and cookies, Elf on the Shelf is supposed to be put with them so they can go back, you know. So anyway, when it's time, Dawson's Elf on the Shelf is missing. Nobody can find it. Nobody knows where it's at. They almost threaten him. Where is it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Go to bed. I get up the next morning. Cookies are eight. One elf's gone. They open their presents. They're doing their thing. And all of a sudden, Dawson jumps up from the den, runs to the refrigerator, opens up the freezer, and pulls out elf. And everybody's like, what, what is the deal with that? What is it? And he said, I wanted to, to keep him here because I can have Christmas all the time. And I went, how awesome would it be to have Christmas all the time? Just the mere thought of that. It's kind of interesting to me. So in his little heart, he knows that, hey, we want to experience this a little more. We want to have that a little more. So I was thinking about that as I read Luke 2, 21 through 35. Just, just listen to the word, and it's just God's word. It, it, just if nothing else, we can read it, and we can hear it, and be blessed by it. But in Luke 2, 21, And when eight days had passed, before his circumcision, his name was then called Jesus, the name given him by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the days for their purification, according to the law of Moses, were completed, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male that opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. And there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. 
And when the parents brought the child Jesus to carry out for him the custom of the law, then he took him into his arms and blessed God and said, Now, Lord, you are releasing your bondservant to depart in peace according to your word. For mine eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And his father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said about him. And Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the fall and the rise of many in Israel and for a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce even your own soul to the end of the thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. Father, thank you again for your word that we can read this morning, that we can be blessed in it. God, thank you for every person in this room, for everyone who may be joining in, uh, Lord, on live stream in this moment. I pray, may we feel, may we sense, may we uh, catch a, 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 f- a feeling, a thought of your presence in this place, God, and may we know and understand a little bit about where Simeon was in his moment. And Lord, for that, we give thanks to you. So bless this day, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Here's the thought as we look at this. Open up in verse 21 and 22. As we look at that, here's what I want you to see. It tells us about the eight days had passed before his circumcision. Mary calls his name Jesus as had been given her by the angel. And when the days of the purification, according to the law of Moses, he was brought to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. And and here is my thought in that one. And it's simply this, in this story, and I never really grasped this before, was just the pure devotion, the devotion uh, of Mary and of Joseph. Their devotion here in honoring, and here's what I want you to hear, honoring the revealed word of God. Because it was revealed all the way back in the book of Leviticus when a firstborn is, is, arrives and when a child is born. Here is the means by which that child is to be brought to the Lord, dedicated to the Lord, circumcised in the temple, and all that was supposed to happen. And in light of all that was going on where they were, being in Bethlehem like they had been, the travel that they had been through, here's what they're going to do. They're going to honor the Word of God that had been spoken, had been written, had been known for many years. But not only that word, the word that I spoke to you a couple of weeks ago when I used the word rhema, the word that was spoken to them by the angel that told them to name the child Jesus, they had that word spoken and revealed to them. So here's my thought in this, and this is pretty awesome to me. One time, I want to hear God speak to me. I want to hear that revealed word of God to me. I want to hear people say all the time, I wish God would just tell me And then they'll name it. Tell me who to marry, where to work, where to live. I wish I could get some specific instructions. I wish, in this case, the name of a child. I wish I could know that revealed word. Here's here's one thing I want you to realize in this very first thought of this passage. It's for them to be able to get that word, to hear that word, to progress where they're going to go, to receive more of that and to walk in that. The first thing they had was a devotion to the revealed word of God, the written word of God, that which had been given to them from long ago in the book of Exodus, the book of Leviticus, the book of Numbers. Mary and Joseph knew that word and they were willing to say, we're going to follow that word no matter where we're at or what we're doing. We're going to follow that word. In following that word, they receive some specifics on some matters. And I think sometimes we, we miss on hearing the Lord speak to us because sometimes we're lacking in a place of devotion and that vo- devotion would be honoring what we know God's word has already said. I- I've shared this once before. I was with a, ma- with a man at lunch one day. We were having a big discussion. His life was all in struggles. And I kept saying, well, the word says, and the word says, and, the word, and he finally said, I know what the Word says. I just don't want to do it. I'm like, ooh, how are we going to progress on and move forward if we know what the Word says and we realize we know what the Word says, but we don't want to have the devotion to follow through with what the Word said. I'm going to tell you, we're going to lack in an opportunity to hear a fresh word, a, a word spoken rightly to us as Mary and Joseph did, and they're about to get some more of it in the coming up chapters. So think about that, a personal word from God we're going to hear when we understand that 
revealed word, that devotion that we have to that. <clears throat> As you look on, there's something that interested in me because I interested in me because I read 23 and 24. And in 24, it talks about offering up a, a sacrifice according to what was said in the law of Moses. Again, they're following that word, a pair of turtle doves and two young pigeons. Now, it's interesting if you look that up back in the book of Leviticus, there was almost like three layers of sacrifices to be made. This sacrifice was the one for the poorest of poor people. They talked about bringing cattle, bringing the firstborn of a flock. And then if you couldn't do that, then you brought a lamb. And if you couldn't bring a lamb, you brought turtle doves or a pigeon. That was, if you could understand that, this is interesting to me, that was said, this is, if you could get it, what the poorest of the poor people would bring. And if you look at that in the moment, here comes Mary and Joseph with baby Jesus. And they brought what little they had. Their devotion was to do what it was revealed to them. But they brought what little they had. And they're willing to take what little they have and put that into the hands of God in a moment to trust him with that. Because here's what oftentimes we said, I hear this a lot. Well, I don't have. I, I don't have. And, and because I don't have, whether it's a financial means or a, a talent means or some kind of way, because I don't have, I feel like I can't do. They brought the least of the least and brought that into that place to make that sacrifice that was brought, revealed to them to bring God's word. I think sometimes for us, we kind of miss on that. And I just put it in spite of the poverty of Mary and Joseph. They bring what's the least of the least to the Lord, and they're going to put that into God's hands. And they're going to do what it is that's been revealed to them. That's an awesome thing to me to be able to look at and try to just grasp that thought. Because so often, I remember so many times for me going, well, I just can't. I just don't. I, and we, we hear that all the time. And think about where we would be. As people, as human beings today, if we understood what it says, I don't have much, but I'm going to take what I've got and put it into the hands of God. And I'm going to trust Him for what's going to flow out of that. I'm going to believe Him. I'm going to trust Him. I'm going to walk into Him for that. So they bring Him into the temple. In verse 25, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. And this man was righteous and devout, looking for the consolation of Israel. And I love this. The Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Christ. And he came in the Spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus, so to carry out the custom of the law, he took him in his arms, blessed God, and he began to speak. I want you to just to see this about Simeon. And I love this. In three verses it says of Simeon, when Simeon came to the temple that day, he came to the temple filled with, led by walking in the Spirit of God. He went there, and here's what I'm going to tell you about this. He went there with some level of anticipation, with some level of expectation, with some idea that in this place, in this day, the Spirit of God is with me, the Spirit of God is upon me, and I'm going to walk in that Spirit today. You and I have been blessed with an amazing opportunity to know this place of an indwelling of the Spirit of God. To know the presence of God that has been imparted into us, upon us, at that moment of our salvation when we receive the Holy Spirit. And here's the thing I tell you in this moment. To know a little bit of Christmas 365, I want you to think about this, this place of Him walking in the Spirit. He came into that place that day, walking in the Spirit of God. And here's what's interesting about this. When He comes into here, and He is three verses in a row, it mentions that, that the Holy Spirit was upon him. Then in verse 26, the Holy Spirit uh, told him he would not see death until he died. And then he came into the temple in the Spirit. So three different times, three different verses there, we see him walking in the Spirit. And in that moment, when Mary and Joseph bring Jesus into that place, you know what? He sees what nobody else can see. Because all of a sudden, in that place of being filled with the Spirit of God, walking in the Spirit of God, when that happens for us, we can see what sometimes the natural eye doesn't see. We can hear what the natural ear doesn't hear. We can sense something that's greater than we may ever know because here we are walking in the Spirit of God. So here's what I see in Simeon. He was a man, and it tells us that he was righteous in verse 25, and he was devout. And he was led by and walking in the Spirit of God. Here's what I want to ask you just for us. Even today, 
as we think about coming to church, any day we think about, especially coming to the house of God, how many times do we say, Lord, fill me with your spirit today. May your spirit dwell within me. May I walk within you. May I walk within that spirit today. May I know that. Because, hey, here's what I say about that is getting myself ready to come and to be able to hear what God has to say, be able to see what God has to show me. Let me to be able to all of a sudden, and he's going to say there in the next verse that he took him in his arms and he blessed God. I tell you what, the greatest thing, I know this. People say, I just want to go to church today and get a blessing. I didn't want to go. You know, isn't it awesome to go get a blessing? Simeon went and gave a blessing. Simeon went and gave a blessing because he was walking in the Spirit. He comes into that place. He realizes whose presence he's in, and he blessed God. I tell you what, in our worship, we should think about, I want to bless God. I want to lift my voice. I want to make known. I want to communicate some truth. I want to make known who this person, this Christ is, and Here's what he said. Now, Lord, you're releasing your bondservant to depart in peace. According to your word, for mine eyes have seen your salvation. His motive of the blessing, his motive behind all that he had encountered in the moment was this. Because of who had appeared. All of a sudden, he's able to see this. His name literally means this. It's interesting. Simeon's name means he who hears. He who hears. So he's able to hear and he's able to understand and perceive some things. So when he who appears is the Lord Jesus, he who appears is who he had been told he would be able to see before he would depart this earth. He who he sees is the one who's going to be known in their day is the Messiah. The one who's going to bring about that term, the consolation, the comfort, the bringing about of Israel. He is able to know that. He hears that. He sees that. And in that moment, all of a sudden, here's what he knows. God in human flesh. I held him in my hands. I felt him. I know that feeling of what that is to hold that baby into my arms, he said. And all of a sudden begins to roll from him this place within his heart. Here's the cool thing about that. Nobody had to prompt him. Nobody had to poke him. Nobody had to encourage him. All of a sudden in his moment, he is where he is. He's doing what it is he has to do because all of a sudden his heart is overflowing with this place of blessing. The Spirit of God has welled up within him because all of a sudden... He has seen the Messiah. Man, he's seen the one. He understands that. He sees it. He sees this one, the Lamb of God, slain before the foundation of the world. Listen to what Peter says about him. Knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with the precious blood of the Lamb, unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. All of a sudden, Simeon grasped who it is. He realizes this one that Peter was going to write about, the one who is going to go to the cross. He realizes who that is and what that's going to be. And all of a sudden, that blessing begins to flow forth from him and his motives begin to flow forth from him. Here's what I want to tell you. For us, we need to have this place. We need to have this place where we listen to what the Lord says to us. We move into that. And we're willing to say, hey, I will be the blessing. I will be the one that the Lord uses to communicate on a word. I mean, I don't know about you. What Jeff Maddox said a while ago, blessed me. It blessed me. And greater than that, it blessed God. I believe that it was a blessing because the Lord laid that in his heart to respond. And he did that in that way. That is an awesome thing. He's the Savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Simeon was able to see him, to realize that. And he just almost breaks out into this song, like a song of praise. For now you're releasing my bond your bond servant to depart in peace according to your word for my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in the presence of all people a light of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Oh, he's able to see. He's able to know that and understand that in that moment because who had arrived? That's an awesome thought. Who had arrived? Have you ever just been in church? Have you ever been there? And all of a sudden, and here's the way this is. I, as I was reading this week, I, I was reading some different material. And, and one of them was, said, you know, lots of times church is just kind of like church. 
You know, you just go and you sing the songs. You listen to the message. And then you get up and you go and you go, that was good. That was good today. And then all of a sudden, some days it's like, whew, somebody came. Somebody came in. There was something different about that day because all of a sudden, when the true presence of God gets ushered into who you are, this is an amazing thing. You can feel that. You can sense that. And you can know that. And all of a sudden, that's what Simeon comes up with. He says, my eyes have seen the salvation, what you have prepared in the presence of people. And he has arrived. First, Jesus is that salvation, that eternal life. And all of a sudden, he senses in that moment, he's here. He's arrived. That which I've waited for, that which I've known. Here's the thing, to know a little bit of what I think about Christmas. And and knowing of that a little bit more on a continual basis. Think about this. Christ has arrived. He has come. He wants to come. He wants to meet with us when we come together. I say this all the time. There should be more of God for us when we meet together in his place. Because if he's in me and he's in you and you and you, when you all come together, there should be more of God in this place than there is anywhere. And when you begin to bless him, all of a sudden that place is when you can know him. Here's what our heart's desire should be, to be able to know that and to know that every day, every week. That should be a longing, a longing for our heart. Simeon came with some expectation. He came with some longing of his heart. And when that began to be touched, all of a sudden he began to see Jesus And here's what's cool about it. He said, which you have prepared in the presence of all people. All people. A lot of revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. Here's the awesome thing. I believe this. When God's presence showed up in that place. And Simeon was a Jew. Believe me. And those Jews were very tight. All of a sudden he saw the presence of God for everybody. He saw that. The light of revelation for the Gentiles. This baby is going to bring together for everyone a moment to be able to know what it means hey, to come together, to sense that presence. And anybody's presence is powerful and it's real to us. There's a sense of drawing, of coming together in that. He sees that. Verse 33 says this, His father and mother were amazed at the things which were being said. And then Simeon, I love this, he blessed God. Then he blessed them. 34. He blessed them. And he said to Mary, his mother, Behold, this child is appointed for the rise and fall of many in Israel, and for a sign to be opposed. And a sword will pierce even through your own soul to the end that thoughts from many hearts may be revealed. And here's the thought about that. He looks at what Christ is going to accomplish He looks at what his life's going to be and he begins to speak that word to Mary. He brings that to Mary and he says these words to her and it's interesting to me. Behold this child appointed for the rise and fall of Israel. And it meant this, for Israel, Jesus was going to be a stumbling block. He was going to be a stumbling block to Israel. And he says that to them. He's going to be for the rise and fall of many. And for the fall of many was there's many. And we know uh, Peter wrote about that, how he was a stumbling block to Israel because they didn't understand him. They couldn't see him. But for all would who believe, oh, he is the rise. He is the one who would transcend. He is the one who is above all. He sees that and he begins to speak that word to Mary. Even there speaking of what there's going to come of a resurrection. And then... He goes on to say that. And for a sign to be opposed. Sign, there's the word miracle. For a miracle. For the miracle. And we know this. The miracles of Christ in his day as he walked upon earth. Many people were opposed to him at his day. As he walked upon the earth and as he performed miracles. There was a place there where they were opposed to that. And then he ends that by saying, A sword, even a sword, Mary, will pierce your own soul. So not only is he that, he is... A sword. And I think of that moment when the mother, Mary, sees her son, Jesus, the one whom she birthed in the manger, she held in her arms, she walked with and she taught him the day when he was put on the cross, pierced in the side with a sword, and she saw him die. He said, hearts, hearts are going to be rendered. What 
powerful words Simeon is speaking in these verses to Mary and to Joseph for them to be able to hear. But here's the thing for us. Here's what he says. I want you to be able to hear my word which I speak to you. Hear what I'm going to say to you so that you can understand and walk into that word and know what it means to have that place of revelation. So for one, you don't stumble. You don't stumble over me. Uh, You see the miracles that I want to perform in you. You see that sword. So here's what he said. Don't let Jesus be a stumbling block for you. Don't don't let him uh, be a miracle that you miss. Because he said, I want you to be able to know that place. And he says this, the word of God is a sword for us. Sometimes that sword pierces the bone and the marrow when we hear truth and we grasp that truth that will pierce through our heart. And he wants us to be able to know him, to live in him, to walk in him, and and to walk with this. Listen, to know this. Blessed assurance. I love that song. In 2020, we need some blessed assurance. And if the Lord wills, come about Monday, we're going to leave 2020 behind. We're going to step into 2021. And we want to do that with a heart that's believing, a heart that is trusting, a heart that can say, I'm going to trust you and I'm going to walk with you. I'm going to listen to what your word says to me. I'm going to have a greater devotion to you in the new year. I want to have a greater walk with you. I want to know what it is to be filled with your spirit like I've never known before going into a new year. Because I tell you what, I believe this. The days ahead can be challenging. No doubt they will. But that song, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of love. Those words were written by a blind lady. When we sang that a while ago, and it talked about visions of rapture, I just thought, that's amazing. She saw visions of rapture, but she didn't see with a natural eye. God wants you to be able to see and to know this. Just what we heard earlier. There is hope beyond today. There is hope beyond this year. There is hope beyond all that we face. And there is hope that leads us to a place of eternity. He wants us to know eternity. He wants us to know that, to live in that, and how some hope and some strength and to wait upon him as we prepare for what he has ahead. Simeon, in his day, saw it. He got it. He understood it. I hope today, as we have this last Sunday of this year, you can see some of that. You can know some of that. I want to see that. I want to know that. I want to be able to hear what only the Spirit of God can reveal to me through the Word. I want to know that. And I want to say, God, I want to know that greater in the days to come, even greater than any times in the past. Let's bow. We're going to pray. And after that, we're just going to sing that song, Blessed Assurance. And I want you to think about that. And if you don't have that blessed assurance today, I want you just to take a moment, and I want you to speak with the Lord as you hear those words, as you sing into that song. And you can know today, as we end up 2020, as we prepare for 2021, you can know something. You can know that in 2021, there can be some blessed assurance because Jesus is there. He's there. Bless God. Bless others. Father, we thank you.